it's pretty common in econometrics to want to do more than just estimate a model. You also usually might want to get a sense for how well that model actually fits the data and then also do some things like conduct hypothesis tests using the parameters of the model that you have just estimated. So that's what we're going to talk about in this video, uh, looking at how well a maximum likelihood uh, model fits the data and some of the hypothesis tests you can do with the maximum likelihood uh, estimators. So kind of the most common measure of a maximum likelihood model fit is called the likelihood ratio index. And uh, it's, it's sometimes denoted as rho, so that's what I'm going to use here, although I don't think there's really a kind of consistent uh, uh, notation for it. Uh, and rho is just one minus this ratio of the log likelihood of your maximum likelihood estimator divided by the log likelihood of a model with only a constant term every other parameter equal to zero, just a constant term. So what this ratio is going to kind of measure is, the, is, is where your log likelihood fits between two extremes. At the worst extreme is only having a constant term and essentially no other model fit beyond that. And then at the other extreme is a perfect model where your, your set of parameters has you know, a likelihood of one. Uh, and, and so this, this ratio is going to tell you where in that spectrum does your, uh, does your particular maximum likelihood estimator and its associated log likelihood fit. One thing to note is this thing, th th this index looks like an R squared. It's going to fall within the range of zero to one. And just kind of mathematically, it looks kind of similar to a, an OLS R squared. And in fact, sometimes it is actually called a pseudo R squared. But I just want to point out that this name is misleading because this metric is really nothing like the, the R squared that you're used to from an OLS regression. In an OLS regression, the R squared tells you what proportion of the variation in the data is explained by your model. That has some really nice intuitive uh, kind of understanding and appeal. That's not the case with the likelihood ratio index. It does not tell you anything about what proportion of variation is explained. All it really tells you is that larger values of rho have a better model fit. But, but that's really no different from just saying that larger values of the likelihood function or the log likelihood function are better. So in some sense, I, I think that the, the likelihood ratio index can sometimes give some like false precision or, or some false, uh, uh, it, it, it kind of falsely gives some deeper understanding when really all it's telling you is just that higher values of the likelihood and log likelihood ratio are better. So um, you might see it. I, I, we're not really going to use it in this class and, and, I, and I'd caution you against over interpreting it in, in your own work or when you see it in other people's work. All right, the other thing you might want to do beyond just understanding how well your model fits is to test some hypotheses. So let's suppose that we want to test any set of general hypotheses about our parameters, we're going to call those this, this, this function h here. And, and, and we're going to set these up so that these functions of the parameters always equal zero. And we could have multiple functions here. This could be a vector of functions. And in fact, we're going to say that there are capital J of these functions giving us capital J different parameter restrictions that we're testing. And I want to point out this might look like we're, we're forcing our hypotheses into a very particular format, but really this, this specification is fully general. We could test if parameters are equal to zero, which is maybe the most standard thing that we do with hypothesis, hypothesis tests. So, you know, we could, we could jointly test our theta one and theta two both equal to zero by just setting up our, our formula uh, or our, our, our hypotheses in, in this kind of way here. We could test if, if parameters are equal to each other. Maybe there's a third parameter, theta three, and we want to test if theta one equals theta three and theta two equals theta three. Well, it's just a little bit of manipulation. We can easily get that into a format where we have theta one minus theta three equals zero, theta two minus theta three equals zero. We can do all kinds of different manipulations like that, uh, all kinds of functions of the parameters, just so long as they equal zero. That's just the, 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 the way we're going to have to set them up for, for these uh, 
for these tests uh, to, to, to work out for us, just based on the math that we're going to use. Um, but, but like I said, this is fully general and there should be no problem with converting any hypothesis you want to test to, to this kind of format. So the most, or one of the most common uh, hypothesis tests that, that, that follows from the maximum likelihood uh, estimation is the likelihood ratio test. Not to be confused with the likelihood ratio index from two slides ago. This is the likelihood ratio test. And the basic intuition here is that if your hypotheses are true, then the log likelihood value of an unrestricted model and the log likelihood of a restricted model should be approximately equal to each other. And what I mean by an unrestricted model is when you just find the, the parameters that maximize log likelihood. And what I mean by restricted model is impose that your hypotheses are true and estimate a model where those hypotheses are forced to be true and get a maximum likelihood estimator out of that. That might mean you're forcing some of your parameters to be equal to zero or equal to each other or something like that. So the way the test actually works is we, we calculate the, this pretty simple test statistic. First, we have to estimate both the unrestricted model, which we're going to use U to denote in the subscript, and the restricted model, which we're going to use R to denote. Once again, that's the unrestricted model is just the maximum likelihood estimator we've been talking about all along. The restricted model is going to be when we force those hypotheses to be true. Estimate both of those models, calculate the log likelihood of each one, and then we just take two times the difference of the log likelihood. That's going to be our test statistic. Um, it's called the likelihood ratio test because it's, you, you could also think of it as being uh, uh, the log of a ratio of likelihoods. The, this lambda term here is the ratio of the log, uh, uh, sorry, the ratio of the likelihood of the restricted model divided by the likelihood of the unrestricted model. And so, so that, that's where the term likelihood ratio comes from. But I think it's easiest to just jump straight to, to this formulation here where we have the log likelihoods. So that's our test statistic, just two times that difference. And that test statistic is distributed chi-squared with degrees of freedom equal to the number of model restrictions. So we just calculate that test statistic we can calculate a critical value for chi-squared based on the number of, of, of model restrictions, that capital J, the number of, of, the number of uh, hypotheses that we're testing, and then just compare the two and determine whether or not we can reject or fail to reject those hypotheses. Two other uh, common hypothesis, hypothesis tests, uh, testing procedures, that, that we can use with maximum likelihood are the Wald test and the Lagrange multiplier test. Uh, they're both a little more complicated, so I'm just going to talk about the intuition, but not the math here. For the Wald test, the, the intuition is that if your hypotheses are true, then applying those, those hypothesis functions to your maximum likelihood estimator should yield values close to zero. And so the Wald test is just going to test if we do plug our maximum likelihood estimator into those hypothesis functions, the, the H function, does that get us sufficiently close to zero? And it conducts a statistical test of, of that, uh, of whether or not those values are, are sufficiently close to zero. The other test is the Lagrange multiplier test. The intuition here is that if your hypotheses are true, then the restricted maximum likelihood estimator and the unrestricted estimator should be close to one another. The derivative of the log likelihood function at the unrestricted MLE equals zero. So that means that the derivative of the log likelihood function at the restricted MLE should be close to zero. And that's what it tests. It tests if that derivative of the log likelihood function evaluated at your restricted maximum likelihood estimator. That's the estimator that you get when you force your hypotheses to be true within your model. Is that thing sufficiently close to zero? So there's some intuitive appeal behind both of these. One thing that's nice about the Wald or the Lagrange multiplier test is that you only have to estimate one model. In the case of the Wald, you only have to estimate the unrestricted model. In the case of the Lagrange multiplier, you only have to uh, estimate the restricted model. Whereas with the, the likelihood ratio test, you have to actually estimate both. Um, but 
actually calculating, once you have models estimated, calculating the test statistic for Wald and Lagrange multiplier are a little more complicated. And so we're just going to stick with the likelihood ratio test in this class. Um, but these are out there. You might see them used in the literature. You might even find that they're useful in your own work, depending on what you're doing. And you can look into the details in the notes that I posted or in any uh, kind of econometrics uh, textbook. We'll get you some more details about these tests. So that's what I've got about model fit and, and hypothesis tests. That's really all I have about maximum likelihood estimation itself. We're gonna have one more video, video here where we talk about numerical optimization, which is a tool that we're gonna have to use sometimes in order to uh, find things like the parameters that maximize some objective function like a log likelihood function. So numerical optimization is gonna be really valuable to us as we try to find our maximum likelihood estimator.